Good morning guys, welcome to this video. I've been uh, just been out here sanding on this hollow handle survival knife. I want to do a little video here for you and discuss some things about my hollow handle survival knives. I plan on making a few more. I've had some people inquire and I wanted to give you my thoughts kind of where I'm at on as far as being a knife maker and and just some details a little bit about how I make these and and so I had a gentleman that contacted me he he wanted a hollow handle survival knife he's really into hollow handle survival knives I am too as well I love the vintage ones but try to make a long story short, you know, he, he hooked me up with the knife parts place that has these uh, hollow handle knife parts. And I'm actually looking for another place that has these. This is the only USA knife maker is the only one I could find so far. But anyway, I want to just kind of talk to you about kind of where I'm at. And I've had a few people inquire. And so, I, you know, I plan on making a, a few more of these. Just wanted to kind of tell you, you know, I, I've got the I've got the knife making down as far as doing the grinds. I, I'm very attention to detail on my grinds. I measure everything out. I, I kind of, you know, that's where I really want to specialize in is is or not actually specialize in, I guess, but concentrate on getting those grind lines straight and so I you know making these knives like I, I made a knife this this last year also I made a SOG MAGV SOG and it came out really nice and I, I do all this by hand I use a four inch grinder and I've gotten really good at doing these grinds and the, the making the knife is not hard it's just time consuming uh, I've got the grinds down I've got, and I'm, when I come up here, and I, you know, I want, you want to make sure all your grinds are centered, particularly when you're coming up to your point. So I've got all that down. You know, the algorithm as far as kind of my process of how I do that. What, what I'm really trying to get better at is the fit and finish. Fit and finish seems to really be kicking my butt right now. And it's like, you know, along this hollow handle, when I use uh, I use this liquid cold weld, I try to be r real clean when I put it in. I put it in with a syringe, but that stuff, if it gets anywhere and it dries, you know, if you got a little spot, then then all of a sudden, when it comes down to time to the fit and finish, you're spending 20, 30 minutes trying to remove this little spot, you know. So it's all a learning curve, of course. And you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm working to get there, and these knives are getting better. But fit and finish seems to be my weak area right now, especially when, when you're wanting to finish out. And I've got a lot more polishing to do on this by hand, and I got to get to the finer grit to shine it up. But when you're looking at an, a shiny blade you got to have that nice look that fit and finish that's what and this one reason why I love 5160 because it has 1% chromium in it it's a high carbon you know it's got 0.60% carbon and I'm actually going to get some 52100 because it's basically like 1095 with 1% chromium the only difference between like 52100 and 5160 is this has 0.60% carbon content on the 5160 and then the 52100 is is like it's like 1095 carbon steel with one percent it's actually you know with 1095 be 0.95 percent so it's actually somewhere up, up around like one percent with like one percent chromium and when you get a little bit of chromium in there see it doesn't have a lot of chromium it, you know to be actually labeled a stainless steel you need around 12 anywhere between 11 and, and 13 percent chromium so the, we're looking at one percent for the 52 100 and the 5160 
which is great. And the reason why I love it is because that 1%, it gives you a little bit of chromium in there. It's, it's not necessarily becomes a stainless, but it, it just makes a beautiful blade. They shine out really nice. And so you got a uh, you got a high carbon steel that produces a really nice shine, and that's what I love about those two particular steels. But <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, you know I got the builds down. It's just the, it's the fit and finish that I'm trying to get, and uh, that I'm trying to improve on. But I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what I do here. I use titanium bar stock when I put these when these go in inserted in this handle. This handle here, I'm going to wrap it with a black number 36 bank line. I've got a lot of shining to do on this. This is my very first one. I sold, this one's going to get stamped 01, but the, the 02 that I did, I sold that to a gentleman. The guy I was telling you about, he, he was telling me about these parts. We got to, we cranked up a conversation online and just kind of hit it off because we're both interested in hollow handles for knives, but he told me about these knife parts. And uh, when I did this, when I was doing this one for him, but when I set the handle, it's just not quite perfect. So I didn't want it to go out. It's not bad, but I told him, let me build you another one and I'll just keep this one. But uh, and so the second one, I got it down. It was a little thing that I didn't check for. I was checking when I set that, when this gets cold welded, you know, I was checking to make sure my handle was straight this way, but I kind of neglected to look this way you know to check it this way but anyway I, I realized you know you got to be on top of it when you're setting that because once that thing once this liquid co well dries I'm telling you guys you're not gonna this thing is not gonna come apart it's just you're gonna have to cut if you want this blade out of there you're gonna have to cut it out of the handle that's how strong this stuff is but uh yeah, so I mean, you know, I've got the knife builds down. It's it's the it's the fit and finish that I'm I'm trying to improve on. But I, what I do is I use titanium bar stock. This is real titanium. And when this goes in there, you know, and then she got this little bar stock piece, and this this one actually doesn't go in this deep. I usually cut these tangs. This one is you know, I, I leave it this long so I can put this in my vise and I can, you know, I can build these primary and secondary beveling so I can do the beveling. So I leave it long like that. Then when I get through with all the all the beveling, then I cut this down. But uh, right now it's like a two and a quarter. So when I cut it down, it's going to be just past that hole there at about one and a quarter. So even at one and a quarter, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's some other guys that I went and researched that build these hollow handle throttle knives. They're not even going in there that deep. So I go in there a little bit deeper than most guys, and I'm also and I'm using the titanium bar stock. And I don't even know. I don't even know what the other guys use for cold weld. I know what I use because I've used it in other knife projects. It's just an outstanding product, and it's. Uh, tremendously strong once it sets so i use the titanium bar stock so you're going to have a, a super strong mechanical hold in there and just you know try to make a nice hollow handle survival knife and so like i said the fit and finish is what i'm working on improving on so the the dirtier you get the knife with the the, the uh, liquid cold weld and then you know just you got to get it polished up it's got to look nice people want it to look nice and shiny particularly this type of hollow handle survival knife so anyway wanted to just do a quick video here for you kind of talk about the hollow handles i'm going to do a few more let me get some i want to get a couple of these built my next one's going to be zero three i'm just going to number them from zero one i don't see myself making more than a hundred of these you know, if I make 44 of them and they get and they get them out there over the next 10 years or whatever, and my name gets out there, fine. And I don't ever charge anybody up front for a knife. The la you know, I'll always, you know, let me build the knife, then you can pay me for the knife. So I'll never ask anybody for any money. So I, I don't. That's just the way I like to conduct business when doing a project like that. And. 
I just trust people. If they don't pay me, I'll just keep the knife. I'm not worried about it. But, uh, because I know somebody will buy it from me. So, yeah, guys. So, I'm just trying to improve on the fit and finish. I'm, I'm going to be experimenting with different sandpapers. And because even when you get finished, you know, I could polish up the blade somewhat out on with my bell grinders. But once I get the blade in there, there's always work that has to be done. You know, finishing up the blade, shining it up. I, I call it fit and finish. And so that's what I'm mostly having to improve on right now. The builds I got down. I got the grinds down. I've done enough knives. I can do hollow grinds, flat grinds. I can do whatever kind of secondary beveling you want. 10 degree, 20 degree, zero tolerance. I've done knives with zero tolerance. So yeah. So guys, I appreciate you stopping by. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.